building a truck you got to think of the end product of this here first off this truck is a steel aluminum combination there's a number of reasons why we use this first off the reason we use a steel superstructure is strength and to keep it lightweight now you're thinking steel how do you keep steel lightweight it's how you configure it how you bend it to get your strength if I would strip everything off this truck except for the steel superstructure it weighs 2,220 pounds another key opponent of how steel superstructure works uh, NASCAR here's an industry of race all in, racing industries you can build those cars out of anything you want to titanium composites aluminum steel but my question is what is that car built out of the superstructure of that car what is it built out of steel then everything else is used to light it up for instance the doors and the sheeting and so on and so forth same principle on this truck the doors here are 100% aluminum because they're not part of my superstructure the top aluminum boxes the siding the sheeting that's all aluminum as long as it isn't part of my superstructure we use a lot of materials for instance this gin set right here if you notice the main superstructure is steel but the doors and the plates are aluminum even the shell is a composite back here on this cribbing box the door is aluminum but you notice this is steel and underneath this is steel the reason for that is say we have a tire failure to protect that another key thing on construction of this thing is your CG you're going to notice our tip table we're holding the record on our tip table on there this truck is registered in at 37.2 degrees it broke over at 39.3 I believe is where it broke over the way we get the stability in this truck number one get our CG low here's the top of our water this truck is carrying 400 gallons of water also our heavier stuff like our cribbing we store it down low the gin set is down low we got our major weight down low okay back in how you set your cribbing up I'm going to pull this one cribbing box to show you how much cribbing is in this box if you unload all three boxes with cribbing what we have we've got 12 foot of cribbing or 60 of these 10 of these four step chocks I'll pull them out quick in a second okay four step chocks here's some more of this here 10 wedges on it Here's my step chocks. And my wedges. Then we got another box on the other side. Number two, the configuration of this door. When we flip this door up, it's out of our way. If we open it up like this, you're sitting there, you'll open up a door, you'll come in here, no, I don't see it, so you shut the door. You come to the next one, you open it up. No, I don't see it. You shut the door, you open it again. Oh, there it is. You pick out your tool. Why are we opening and closing the door? They're in our road. Also, if this door happens to be opened up, you got this door and you swing it open here, it's blocking my line of sight. I will step clear out here in order to see an oncoming car. I almost got hit because of a door like this from a car so I we quit doing it another feature it gives us with the door flipped up like this besides all the way it's a great environment area on a real hot sunny day or rainy the door is shielding us our cribbing boxes the door flips up out of the way disadvantage of this door is if you have it open when you pull out of a station to prevent this we put on two warning systems with the door opening up the door we need a warning system we use visual 
and we use, also use Audible. Go ahead and open the door. Okay, first off, the light isn't just a red flashing light. It's an LED warning light. It's extremely bright and it's hitting the driver right in the eyes. This thing's annoying when it goes off. Also the annoying part, do you notice the backup beeper? It's inside the cab. Now we've muffled it so you can hear us talking here. But it's extremely loud in there to get your, no get your attention. Say you stop and you're sitting in here, you don't want to hear that back the audible alarm. Just hit your emergency brake and it shuts it off. So it's a warning system letting me know I've got a door open. I've been going down the highway before and going right straight into the sunlight. I mean, extremely bright and one of my doors jarred on me. It went off, I'm telling you, it gets your attention extremely fast. Another benefit the door gives you is for rehab. It's extremely hot out here today. It's around 100 degrees. Okay, standing in the sun, you're not going to cool off that much. We create a shade as an environment. Another thing we can do is bring out a positive pressure fan. Notice we have an air hose hooked onto this fan. We'll take our hose, disconnect it, and have an area on the pump where we plug this in. This will set up an environment to, try to cool down a firefighter. Start your fan, put him in the shade, go ahead, get his gear off, and rehydrate him. It's a great rehab area. This is what the doors will give you too. Now if I'm out in the sun, I will not cool down half as fast as being back into the shaded area. Another key component with the steel superstructure gives us is the ability to lay out our compartments and the configuration of our compartments. Do you notice this compartment is translink? It allows us to arrange our equipment in an organized fashion. And also, as I'm standing here, I can look through the compartment and tell here. Also, it gives me the ability to put equipment above the doors. Now, layout. Control, road control is key here. We are going to run around this truck looking for our cones and signs and vests. Here's our cones. Here's our road control signs plus our vests. Two sets. Now, the uh, SCBAs. I have an SCBA and a spare bottle. Two of them. This side is configured up for firefighting. If I grab a hold of my SCBA and put it on, that's telling me I'm going into a burning building. Here's my flashlights, two flashlights, a halogen tool, hydrant wrenches, my sheetrock hook, my posi pressure fan, extinguishers, my quickie saw, my cross lay, my axe, Back here is my pipe pulls and my trash hook, LA trash hook, shovels, so on and so forth. So it's extremely key to lay this truck out. A lot of people say there is no way you're going to get all that equipment into this truck. We show that equipment laid out on the ground here. I guarantee you this equipment's on this truck. I am going to prove this to you. First take it off, but I'm going to pull off. What I'm going to pull off this truck right now is the equipment from here up to here on these doors. From this part right up through here. That's the only equipment I'm going to pull off and keep the camera in the same speed so you can recognize it. I consider this truck my toolbox. One tool we got in this toolbox is what we call the blast system. 
that that we'll cover that in a little bit but this is where we store the poles for the blast system notice where they're at you don't even notice them up there so here's my poles to my blast system there's my color coding now what i'm going to pull off just what's on top of this box that's all i'm going to pull out okay here's my three poles Here's my trash hook, or LA trash hook, whatever you call that. Pike pole. Spud bar, pry bar, uh, cement bar. I'd have gave you 200 bucks for this one night. I really needed one batch, so we put it on a truck. Shovel. Now, what you put up here is how you lay this truck out. My stabilizers. Two stabilizers. Also my stabilizing jacks. Again, I'm pulling off this what's above the doors. Flashlight. Halligan tool. Sheetrock tool. This equipment was just above that door. Look how much room we took off. That's one advantage of the swing up door. The swing up door has a couple more advantages too. I want another advantage of a flip up door like this. Take particular note of this door. Look what we've got here at our equipment. I can come over here, say I'm gonna take out a windshield, my front windshield. Here's my windshield cutter, my bolt cutters, my air tools. Since I have calves on this truck, I've got an unlimited supply of air. Here's a cutter, here's a tool that we're all familiar with. Our air chisel. Here's a tool we're not familiar with because it takes so much air is a shear. It's a little air shear. Instead of making a noise with the chisel, I take the shear and I can just take the sheet metal and just open it up rapidly. This thing will rapidly open up the side of a door so you can reach in and undo your latches and stuff. Here's my cutter for my uh, battery on my rescue side here's my rescue tools my hydraulics I've got a cutter spreader ram now let's demonstrate the advantage of pre-connected come up here start my tool okay I'm gonna put it down to idle so you can hear me talk okay I get a hold of this tool I pull out Okay, I'm ready to operate. I'm not hooking up my tool. I'm operating immediately. Also, when I pull off straight, my hose has already been straightened up. It isn't coiled. So you can pre-connect the set of tools in a compartment, fine. Say I, uh, let me shut this, this power unit off so you can hear me talk. Say direct, this has got 100 foot of hose on each reel. Say the wreck is over 100 foot away. We design the power pack to be taken out of the compartment. Disconnect it, disconnect it right here. Take your power pack, your tools, grab your extra set of hose, which we're carrying up above, and go to your seam. Here, I call it carrying my Dr. Duff stuff. My fibrillator, my O2, meds if you carry that all your stuff for taking care of a patient. Here's a tool I feel is more important sometimes than my rescue tools. An air wrench, what do we need to do? Take off a tire? In some cases, yes. It's easier to unbolt something like this tire than it is to cut it off of there. Let's get it out of our way. 
we have enough air on this truck to operate 10 of these simultaneously we can run a 90 pound jackhammer for people in the city you know a, a collapse you know you're jackhammering something else another feature somebody asked me about he goes what about trench rescue the air supply of trench rescue i've got an endless supply of air on this truck what you have to do is set up a filtering system use the same filtering systems they use in a paint booth you know it dries it and filters the air you would have to set up a filtering system or carry it up high where you just plug it off then you got breathable air for like trench rescue or something like this you've got the air because of the calf system let's utilize it on the passenger side of this truck above the doors we got our backboards we have two of them also we have the capability I carry another pike pole. You can carry a longer pike pole on this side here. An extension ladder. Again, I want to stress this equipment is above this door. At the very back of the truck, we have another area here. We can carry another pike pole. Here's our hose reel, if you order the hose reel. The recessed directional light bar, the wine for the hose reel, the third brake light. This is access to our rear hose bed storage. A blitz, pre-connected blitz monitor, if you order that. Here's your pull out step to be able to step up here. Another feature on the back of this truck while we're back here is we got a pre-connected fill hose. On the back here, I want to point out a couple things. One is the auto fill. What this is designed to do, you turn it on automatic, you hook up to your hydrant, open your hydrant. The hydrant will fill this tank up to 90% to 95% and shut it off. Then when it gets below 60%, it turns it back on. That way you do not have to monitor your tank. All you got to do is look at your tank vision. Also, we have a pre-connected quick fill line here. There's a hole down right here. You just push this down to hold it. In order to get this hose out, all you do is grab it, pull it out. Okay, while we're still on the back of the truck, we got a couple tripod lights back here. So when we move out, now we've had the tripod lights, we need a way to hook them up. There's an optional light box, plus there's an 80 foot reel back here that you pull out. Notice where the gin set is located. It's down low, it's got a center of gravity, it's not inside the box, which is raising our center of gravity and also taking up room. This gin set is Onan's, an industrial grade Onan's. The only reason you're ever down here and opening this gin set up is to service it. That's the only reason you'll ever open this up. The rest of the time the controls are up above. With the gin set automatically comes two extender lights. 1500 watt, which is actually the optimum, which gives you a 2000 watt. Also your electrical box and your outlet and these are GFI set. To operate the gin set, here's your start. Notice the light is on. Deploy, de deploy your scene lights. A key item on this pump panel, all the controls are in here. Gen set, auto fill, pump control, foam injection system, and my cast system to dry it up. My tank level, nozzle holder for my whip line. Also what this pump panel has built into it is a storage area to carry extra tools if you order that part there. 
And then last but not least is my control valves. My tank fill, my reel, my cross lay full flow, whip line, and calves, cross lay calves. Notice these, both these are blue. I make an initial attack, I can open them both simultaneously. I will get an extremely wet calves. Just as soon as they make their initial attack, shut this one off and put it to full calves. If you order the 35 horse pump, you're able to put the two and a half inch pre-connect on. Here's the gauge to monitor it. Your control lever for your valve. And this tray here is 150 foot of two and a half inch hose pre-connected to your monitor, your blitz nozzle, and it also pre-connect the hose bed. Behind the pump panel, foam storage, you carry two foam ga five gallon cans of foam, the gas tank to the generator and the pump, and the foam tank. Another key point the walkway gives me besides the protection from traffic and stuff is getting up on top of my track. If I'm getting up from the back, I have a long d distance to fall. My recessed step allows me to come right on up onto the back end of this here. What this gives me is the ability now to service my foam tanks or gas or get stuff out of my compartment. For instance, we need to add foam. Take your lid off, grab your foam can, pull your lid, and pull your foam into your container. We are not on the ground. We're still up here in the operational area and we can see what's going on. We always got control and a visual of what's happening. I can access my upper storage from this point right here. My handles are right here. Just flick them, brings my door open. I, I'm able to access it here. Also, I bring down a step, I come on up into this area. This is where we're going to carry when we don't need it very often. We're carrying all our wildland equipment in here. Our three brooms, three shovels, three flappers, three clouds, chainsaw, even wildland gear. The importance of the wildland gear up here. We're in our full turnout. We can sit down right here and change out into our wildland equipment out of our structure equipment. We are not sitting on the ground where we're exposed to the elements, a car or traffic or whatever. And also, remember, we are always in a visual uh, to tell what our scene is going on, what's happening to our scene. We can even operate our pump panel from here. Also, we have accessibility to our upper storage hose bed or compartmentation up here. We can get into our compartmentation. 